The new year is almost here, so I'm sure you're all thinking about making your new year's resolutions. It's a tradition that spans cultures and communities, a symbolic fresh start that many of us eagerly embrace. But all the new year's resolutions are great, they can be almost impossible to stick to. Plus, there's so many disadvantages of setting goals and resolutions that you're not even remotely aware of. Some of you are probably wondering if you should still be making resolutions in the first place. Are they even beneficial? Well, I've got some great news. I've done hours and hours of research to find these answers for you. I'll be preparing a series of videos to get you prepared for the new year. I can promise you that if you listen to these videos and apply these tips and strategies, you will significantly improve your health. Your health is essential for a successful and fulfilling life. It is the key to expanding your income, impact, and happiness. All I ask is that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos in this series. Now, let's get started by learning how to direct your focus. Have you ever heard some experts say that when setting goals and resolutions, you should look at where you want to be in a year and start from there? But doing this can be extremely challenging and may lead to limited ambition. You see, many of us are simply not dreaming big enough. Are your goals limited by your fear of failure? Do you keep setting resolutions that don't allow you to expand beyond your comfort zone? Is your limited exposure impacting the scope of your ambition? Are you struggling with a negative outlook and self-limiting beliefs? Are you too busy surviving that you've forgotten how to dream big? If you've answered yes to any one of these questions, here's what I want you to do. Instead of asking yourself, what should I do to become successful? I want you to ask yourself, what does success look like for me? The beauty of this question is that it empowers you to choose the avenues that aligns with your strengths, passions, and values. It acknowledges that success is a multifaceted concept and there is no universal blueprint that guarantees achievement. This question directs your focus on where you want to go instead of assigning a specific path that assumes you know exactly what to do. Because sometimes we just don't. And other times our ambition may be nowhere near what we can actually achieve. For me, success looks like having control over my time, being financially free, making a greater impact, being more generous, being healthier, being happier, improving my professional skills, being a better mother, wife, sister, or friend. What does success look like for you? I want you to write this down because this is an important starting point for deciding what goals and resolutions you need to create. But guys, we have another problem. How many of us are really bad at predicting what will make us happy in the future? You thought it would be finishing school, getting married, or perhaps having kids, and you did all this and you're still feeling like something is missing. Is happiness or success a moving target? Research shows that when people were asked how they felt after receiving their desired outcome, they reported not feeling as good as anticipated. I myself can attest to that fact. I finished medical school, had a great career as a doctor, got married, had kids, migrated to another country, changed jobs, and those milestones still didn't feel as good as anticipated. And even when they did, the feeling was only temporary and fleeting. Effective forecasting is our ability to predict how we will feel in the future. And research suggests that we often overestimate the impact of positive and negative events on our happiness. When these events occur, the happiness derived from them tends to be temporary. And we often find ourselves still searching for that elusive sense of fulfillment. There's another concept known as hedonic adaptation, which is also relevant here. It suggests that humans have the remarkable ability to adapt to changes in their lives, whether positive or negative, and return to a relatively stable level of happiness. This adaptation can result in the initial excitement and joy of achieving a goal fading over time, leading to a cycle of continually seeking the next accomplishment in pursuit of lasting happiness. It's this hedonic adaptation that causes some people to argue that money can't really buy happiness. So if you're going to set goals and resolutions for the new year, 
don't assume that it will turn out exactly as you intended. And even if they do, you might not be as happy as anticipated. Counterfactual thinking can further complicate our pursuit of happiness. This sets in after you've achieved an outcome and find the experience less satisfying than anticipated. So you start considering alternative scenarios that could have brought more joy. You start thinking about what could have been instead of what actually happened. You start thinking that you would have been happier if you had studied something else, married someone else, chosen a different career, or had more or less children. This can lead to feelings of disappointment and the sense that your achieved goal fell short of expectations. This type of thinking can lead us down some pretty dangerous paths, like quitting our jobs or getting divorced because we think that these drastic changes will improve our lives. Moreover, the transient nature of positive emotions associated with goal accomplishment can contribute to a cycle of setting new goals in an attempt to recapture that fleeting sense of happiness. This cycle, however, may not necessarily result in long-term satisfaction. So why do you need to know all this? Well, I want to emphasize the importance of finding intrinsic meaning and joy in the process of pursuing goals rather than solely focusing on the outcome. As you're about to embark on setting goals and resolutions, I want you to be more mindful. I want you to take a moment to be grateful, to be optimistic, Take a moment right now to appreciate your journey. You've made it thus far and even greater things are in store. Now let's focus on moving forward. So while setting goals might seem like a good idea on paper, there are many reasons why achieving them may not bring as much happiness as anticipated. In my next video, I'll be describing the disadvantages of setting goals and resolutions. So remember to subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, if you truly want to revolutionize your life and reinvent yourself, you'd want to check out the process that you need to go through to change your life.